morning, one and all. So, this is Dr. M. Maheswara, Department of Civil Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigan. So, today we are going to deal the course Fluid Mechanics. The topic name is Properties of Fluids. So, before going to this topic, the course outcomes related to this is that means that at the end of the course, the students should be able to uh, define the fluid. So, what is the fluid? The course outcome one is the, uh, the student can define the what is the fluid and what are its properties. And also, he, he can he or she can describe the surface tension and the relations in different conditions. The surface tension is nothing but the there will be tension at the surface of any fluid. If you take water, the top surface of water, so we will have some tension, so which is called surface tension because the tension is existing on the top of the water surface. That's why that is called surface tension. So of course outcome two is that Newton's law of viscosity. So what is Newton's law of viscosity? Viscosity is nothing but the resistance to flow. So if any fluid, uh, if any force is exerted on that, it may be gravitational force or external force, it will flow. The viscosity is nothing but the resistance to flow. So the Newton's law of viscosity he can able to explain. And uh, classify fluids based on the Newton's law of viscosity and uh, solve problems on viscosity. So here the fluids are classified majorly into uh, based on the uh, Newton's law of viscosity. So Newtonian fluids, non-Newtonian fluids. So and also some problems on the viscosity he will he can do. So course outcome three. So CO3. Here the thing is that capillarity rise or fall. So what is capillarity? Uh, what is capillarity rise or what is capillarity fall? So whenever a small tube is inserted into a fluid, that fluid will rise beyond the surface, top surface of the that fluid, which is called the capillary rise. Or some of the fluids, if you insert a small tube, the top surface will be above the surface in the tube itself. So that means the surface inside the tube, the fluid surface inside the small tube will be lower than the normal uh, surface top of that fluid which is called a, a capillary form. So, so these things also we learn at the end of this course. So CO4, here understand the concept of surface tension and applications. So where these surface tension applications will be applied. So that also uh, will be learned by the student at the end of this course as a course outcome for then course outcome 5 so here capillarity and compressibility so what is capillarity what is compressibility where it will be applicable and what are the advantages or disadvantages of this capillarity and compressibility so those concepts also will be learned by the student which is the course outcome and course outcome 6 is the pipe flow. So that means how the fluid will act if, if it is travels through the pipe. So there will be friction, fluid friction. That means if any two materials are moving with different velocities, there will be friction between the surfaces of the, both the materials. Here also the fluid will travels through the pipe. It may be gravitational flow or it may be pressure flow. So there will be a friction between the surface of the pipe material and surface of the fluid. So that knowledge also will be got by the end of this course. And uh, what is the demerit? So because of this friction, what will happen and why it is happened, how much it is happened, all these things will be known by the student at the end of this course outcome. Today we are going to deal with the 
properties of fluids. So you know already fluid. The fluid, so normally the materials are divided in the previous class we discussed it. Materials are solids and fluids. The solids will have an elastic limit. So within the elastic limits, so if the strain is proportional to the stress, whereas the fluids, there is no such elastic limit. So as soon as uh, the force is exerted, the fluid will continuously to move and uh, the solids will regain its uh, original position or shape uh, after the removal of the load. Whereas these fluids will not uh, regain its uh, original shape after removal of the force and uh, these fluids are also again divided into two types. So one is that liquids and another one is the gases. So, of course, there are similar characteristics between the uh, fluids, that, that means uh, liquids and gases, but there are so many uh, different properties uh, will be exerted by the liquids and gases. So, if you see that, the top surface will be maintained in case of liquids, whereas the gases will not maintain the top surface. Another is uh, demerity, that means a uh, distinction between them is the volume. <coughs> so the liquid will occupy the constant volume. So wherever you put, wherever you keep in a small or big or a room or whatever it may be, there is no difference in the volume of the liquid. Whereas the gas, if you keep in a small container, it occupies the small volume. If you keep uh, it in the bigger container, it occupies a bigger volume. So there will be no constant volume in case of the gases. And here, if you are coming now fluids, so whatever it may be, it may be gas or it may be liquid. Here we are going to deal today the properties of fluids. The property is nothing but the characteristic of a system. So, if you apply a force, how it uh, reacts. Uh, if you apply a heat, how it reacts and uh, all these things uh, will come under the properties of fluids. Here, we can see the uh, some familiar properties. So, what are those? Pressure, temperature, volume and mass. So, why should we learn this pressure, temperature, volume? Or mass. So, practical applications are there. If you uh, allow the water or a fluid in any pipe with certain pressure, the pressure based upon the pressure, the pipe material will be decided. So, if the pipe material is uh, not strong enough uh, or if the pressure is increased a lot, then what will happen? The pipe will burst. So, all the liquid or fluid will come out. So, that's why. The practical application of the pressure is that if you want to uh, design a pipe material for so and so pressure, so then that is the purpose of the property pressure. So, unless you know the uh, pressure exerted by the fluid onto the surface of uh, any material, so we have to uh, design, we have to keep such a strong material of the pipe. Similarly, temperature and volume and also mass. So, uh, these are the properties of fluids. And properties are considered to be either intensive or extensive. Here, mainly properties are divided into two things here. Intensive or extensive. Intensive means inside of that one, extensive but exterior of that one. You will know what is intensive property, what is extensive property in the coming slide. So see here, intensive property means they are independent of the mass, intensive. So whatever may be the quantity of the uh, liquid or fluid, it may be smaller quantity, it may be bigger quantity, it is independent of the quantity of the or mass of the system. So those properties are called Intensive properties. So, example temperature. So, if you take a temperature property, then temperature means nothing but the 
energy, temperature, energy. It, it is nothing but the, if quantity is very less, temperature will not change. If quantity is more, then also temperature, energy is not change. So, in, it is independent of the mass. So, irrespective of the quantity of the material or fluid, it is a constant. It is a measurable. Okay? That is a intensive property. If you take one gram of mass, so if you take one kg of mass, so temperature energy will is the intensive property. Similarly, pressure. So, pressure is nothing but the force applied for unit area of that material, any material. So, that is the pressure. So, temperature, pressure and density are the intensive properties. That means independent of the mass. So, density means what? The weight by volume. So, how many kgs it weighs per 1 cc, 1 cubic centimeter or 1 cubic meter. So, what is the weight of that fluid? So, it is a constant. So, in respect, if you take small quantity of uh, a liquid or fluid, if you can take bigger quantity of fluid or liquid, the density will not change. So that means its density will be constant. Normally, the water density is 1000 kg per meter cube. That means if you take a, a box of 1 meter length, 1 meter width and 1 meter height. So if you pour the liquid or water into that box, so 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter box, it weighs 1000 kgs. So, that is the density of the water. So, and the density is uh, depending upon the different materials. So, if you take a petrol, it will have a different density. If you take a diesel, it will have a different density. If you have mercury, it will have different densities. Depending upon the molecular of the molecules or attraction between the molecules. So, those are the intensive properties. So, intensive properties are that they are independent of the mass. So, examples are temperature, pressure, density. Another property is extensive properties. So, extensive properties are opposite of intensive properties. So, intensive properties are temperature, pressure, and density. Extensive properties will depend on the size or extent of the system. That means, if you take 1 gram of uh, or 1 kg of fluid, if you take 100 kg of fluid, the properties will differ. So, those type of uh, uh, properties are called extensive properties. Then, specific properties. Extensive properties for unit mass, they are called the specific properties. So, whatever it may be the extensive properties for unit mass. So, unit mass means per kg of mass or per gram of mass. What are the extensive properties? Those are called specific properties. So, see here. These are the properties of fluids. Intensive properties will not, do not depend on the amount of fluid present regardless of size or mass of the fluid. So, examples are pressure the force per unit area exerted by the fluid. That means, if you put uh, liquid or fluid in any container in any pipe, so whatever may be the uh, force exerted by the that material, uh, that uh, liquid fluid onto the material of that container or pipe, so that is called a pressure. Unit area, unit area, the force per unit area, that means force is kg, per unit area, per millimeter square, per centimeter square, per meter square. That means millimeter by millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter area. So, what is the force exerted by that fluid? That is called a pressure or one centimeter by one centimeter. That means one square centimeter. What is the force acting by the fluid, which is called a pressure? Then temperature. So, temperature is nothing but the a measure of thermal energy. So, it is a, a thermal energy within the fluid. So, which is called a temperature. So, the difference between the heat and temperature. Heat is different and temperature is different. The temperature is nothing but the energy, thermal energy present uh, within the fluid. Then is the density, the mass per unit volume of the fluid. Here, density means weight by volume. That means here, mass, mass per 
unit volume. So unit volume is mass means it may be kg gram like that. Unit volume. Unit volume means one millimeter by one millimeter by one millimeter. So one cubic millimeter. What is the weight of or uh, mass of that fluid is called the density of that fluid. Or one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So one cubic centimeter, which is also called one cc. What is the mass uh, of that fluid that is called density of the fluid per centimeter cube? Similarly. 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter, if you pour the liquid or fluid, so how much degrees? That means how to the mass of that 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter, length 1 meter, width 1 meter, depth 1 meter. So it is a cubic meter. So what is the mass of the fluid <coughs> per cubic meter of the cubic meter that is called the density of that fluid? So intensive properties will not depend on the uh, quantity of the material or fluid, <coughs> those are the pressure, temperature and density. So pressure is nothing but the force per unit area or how much force is acting on a particular unit of area. It may be millimeter square, it may be centimeter square or it may be meter square. Similarly, temperature nothing but the thermal energy present within the fluid and the density is nothing but the mass of the fluid per unit volume. So unit volume may be per cubic meter, per centimeter cube or per millimeter cube. What is the mass of that uh, fluid? That is called a density. <coughs> so other uh, intensive properties. So intensive properties do not depend on the quantity or amount of the fluid present. Eh? So another uh, properties, intensive properties are viscosity and specific gravity. Viscosity is but I already told you it is nothing but the resistance to deformation or flow. So viscosity here the measure of fluid's resistance to deformation or flow. That means if you take uh, some fluids, it may be water, it may be petrol, it may be diesel, it may be grease, whatever it may be. If you pour on the floor, it may be alcohol. Uh, some fluids will travel some certain distance for the same amount of force. Uh, not all this. Uh, fluids will travel the same distance. So some some fluids will travel lesser, lesser distance and some fluids will travel more distance. So depending upon the resistance to flow. So which is nothing but called the viscosity. So viscosity is nothing but the fluids resistance to flow or deformation. So uh, it has some resistance uh, to flow. So that is called the viscosity. So, uh, the specific gravity is nothing but the ratio. So, what is the ratio here? Density of the fluid, if you take any fluid, it may be water, it may be petrol, it may be diesel, or it may be, if it may be mercury, uh, the ratio of the density of that particular fluid with the uh, reference substance. So, that means density of any fluid to the density of reference fluid. Our substance. So, what is the ref reference substance here? Usually, we'll take water. So, if you want to know the specific gravity of uh, petrol, we will take the density of the petrol divided by density of water. If you want to know the specific gravity of uh, mercury, so we will take the density of mercury divided by the density of water. So, similarly, if you take a uh, uh, diesel. So, density of diesel divided by density of water. So, here at the denominator, we are using the density of water for all the purpose, for all the materials, all the fluids. So, which is called a reference substance. Here, water is a reference substance. That means, uh, water density is a reference density. So, with respect to, to the water density, what is the density of that other remaining fluids? So, if you take a uh, Cc gravity of water. That means in the numerator, density of water, the denominator, reference also water. So that's why it is the density of water. So density of water divided by density of water. So that will become 1. That's why Cc gravity of water will become 1. Whereas if you take a mercury. So mercury, that means density of mercury is 13,600 kg per meter cube, whereas water is 1000 kg per meter cube. 
So then specific gravity of uh, mercury. So that is density of mercury divided by density of reference substance that is water is thousand. So thirteen thousand six hundred divided by thousand. Okay. So you can see here thirteen thousand six hundred divided by thousand. So if, if we cancel this, so 13.6. Here, the specific gravity of the mercury is 13.6. Whereas for water, density of water is 1000, reference uh, substance is also water. So, all the it will become 1. So, density of water is 1 and density of mercury is 13.6. That means if you compare the densities, so if it is less than the 1, the density, the specific gravity of any substance, if it is less than the one. So that means it is a lesser density than the water. If the uh, specific gravity is more than one, then it is uh, density is more than the water. That means whatever the substance uh, fluids, if more density is there, if you keep that uh, material, that fluid uh, into the water, that will uh, submerge inside the, that means it takes the bottom of the water. And if the any fluid which is having lower specific gravity, that means less than one, maybe petrol. So if you pour the petrol into the water, petrol will float on the top of the water because the specific gravity is or density of the uh, petrol is less than the water. That's why it floats on the top of the water. Whereas the mercury is also a fluid if you pour into the water, so it occupies the bottom of the water. So, because the density is more or the specific gravity is more for the mercury. Then extensive properties. In the properties of fluids, extensive properties are told depends on the quantity of fluid. So, intensive properties means it will not depend on the quantity of um, or mass of the fluid. Whereas, the extensive property will depend on the quantity of fluid present. So, how much quantity is there? That means, example, volume. So, volume means if it is a small uh, mass, so it will have small volume. If it is a uh, more mass, then it will have more volume. So, volume will come under the extensive properties. Similarly, mass, if it is how much uh, weight, so that means more volume of fluids. If you take more mass, it will be there. So, if you take small quantity of uh, fluid, it will have less weight or less mass. So, these extensive properties will depend on the quantity of the fluid present. So, those are the volume and mass and total energy, the sum of the kinetic and potential energy in the fluid. So, here total energy is there. Normally, the total energy will be datum energy, kinetic energy, pressure energy. So, some of all these things will, uh, will be treated as the total energy. So, this also will depend upon the quantity of fluids. So, the total energy is nothing but the summation of kinetic energy and potential energy that is called datum energy and pressure energy. So, three energy uh, summation is called total energy. Kinetic energy means while flowing, the flowing, kinetic means flowing. So, while it is moving, it will have some energy. So, example, you can cut even what it may be with the water. If you want to cut the iron also, high uh, force, high pressure, highly movement uh, that uh, water can cut the even iron. So, here, uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, that is the data energy. that means height of that uh, fluid or water. So, if it is very high, then it will have high potential energy. If it is very speed, then I have very high kinetic energy. And if it exerts more pressure, so there is the pressure energy. So, here the total energy nothing but the sum of these three. So, pressure energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, these are dependent upon the quantity of uh, a fluid present. So, if less quantity of fluid is there, the total energy will be less. 
with the more quantity of fluid is there, energy will be more. Similarly, total heat content, the total amount of thermal energy in the <coughs> fluid, that is the total heat content. Here, the extensive property is nothing but the, it depends upon the quantity or amount of fluid present. So, the examples for the extensive properties of fluids are volume, mass, total energy, total heat content. So, depending upon the availability of the quantity of fluid, if it is more or less, the volume will be more or less, the mass, the weight will be more uh, or less, depending upon the quantity of it. So, if less quantity, less mass, less volume. If more quantity, more mass, more volume. Similarly, total energy also, if more mass, um, more volume, then total energy also will be more. Similarly, total heat content also will be more. If it is less, uh, quantity, uh, total energy or total heat content will be less. So, that is why the extensive properties will be dependent on the quantity. So, if the available quantity is less, if the available quantity is more, the properties will change. Those are the extensive properties. See here, you can see in a tabular form, intensive properties, extensive properties. So, here you can see, it uh, does not depend on the amount of matter. So, whatever the intensive properties will not depend on the uh, amount of uh, fluid. That means, respective of the amount of fluid, maybe small quantity or if it is bigger quantity, the properties will not change. Those are called intensive properties. Whereas, the properties will change depending upon the availability of quantity of fluids. So, amount of matter. So, if uh, amount of matter is more, the properties are different. If amount of matter is less, the properties are different. So, if it depends, any property depends on the quantity of or amount of matter, those are called extensive properties. Whereas, if it does not depend on the amount of matter, those are called the <coughs> intensive properties. So, example for those are melting point, boiling point, density, color and temperature. These are the intensive properties. Whereas, extensive properties volume, energy, mass, size and weight. So, if you see the intensive properties, melting point. So, what is the meaning of melting point? Melting point means if you take the ice. So, if you uh, rise a temperature, then what will happen? That uh, ice is in the solid form. So, then it will become liquid, that is a water, after reaching certain temperature. So, so, that the point at which the solid becomes to the liquid, that is called a melting point and boiling point. So, boiling point is nothing but the, it is again depends upon temperature and pressure. So, if temperature is still raised, so initially because of rise of temperature, the ice, solid ice is becoming melting and becoming liquid water and still you are increasing the temperature heat energy, then the liquid form of water becoming uh, evaporating form. It is converting into gas. So, the point at which uh, any fluid, any material is becoming gaseous. So, that is called a boiling point. In the density. So, density is nothing but the weight of any fluid divided by the, that means uh, per unit volume. So, maybe millimeter cube or maybe centimeter cube or maybe cubic meter. So, the weight of that uh, or mass of that fluid per unit volume, which is called here density, all these are the intensive properties. So, melting point also, irrespective of the quantity of water, boiling point also, irrespective of the quantity of fluid. If you take any, day, any one kg of uh, uh, water, ice uh, 1 kg of water or 10 kg of water. So, if you rise temperature reaching a certain temperature, automatically the melting point comes. So, irrespective of the amount of uh, material or fluid. So, if maybe 1 kg or it may be 10 kg. So, if it reaching a certain temperature, 
then melting point uh, like a it may be 1 kg or 10 kg. Similarly, if it is 1 kg or 10 kg, the boiling point will reach after reaching certain temperature. So, those points are constant. So, they will not change. If you take uh, 1 gram uh, after reaching certain temperature, it will melt, it will boil. If you take 1 ton also, uh, after reaching the certain temperature, the same temperature, okay. So, it will melt or it will boil. Density also is same. If you take a one cubic meter, one centimeter cube or one millimeter cube, small quantity also, density will not change. Then color. So color also intensive property. So water may be the quantity. If you take one gram of fluid or if you take 100 grams of fluid, it may be one lakh grams of fluid. The color will never change. So that's why uh, instead of the melting point, boiling point, density, the color is also will be same irrespective of the amount of matter. So that's why the color is also come under the intensive properties and temperature. The temperature is also a property. It is an intensive property irrespective of the uh, amount of or quantity of the fluid. Whereas Extensive property, you can see the volume. So, volume, energy, mass, size, and weight. So, volume means here extensive property means if you take a small quantity, it will have a smaller volume. If you get a uh, more quantity, that means uh, one ton of that fluid, it will have more volume. So, the property will be changed. The volume will be changed. So, uh, centimeter cube, millimeter cube, cubic meter, okay, kilometer uh, cube. <laughs> cubic kilometer like that. So, volume will be changed depending upon the availability of the uh, fluid quantity. So, energy, similarly energy, similarly mass, size and weight. So, even weight also will come under the extensive properties. All these are the dependent on the amount of fluid available. So you can see the figures. So boiling point, you can see color, temperature, mixture, and hardness. So the extensive properties, volume. That means uh, uh, it, these properties will change depending upon the availability of quantity of fluid. So more fluid, less fluid, these properties will be changed. So those are the volume, mass, size, weight, and length. So, uh, these are the extensive properties. Fluid properties topic uh, in the fluid mechanics and uh, course outcomes 1, 2. So, fluid properties, Newton's law of viscosity and CO3 is capillarity rise, what is capillarity rise, what is capillarity fall, where it is used and CO4 is the surface tension, where, what are the applications of the surface tension, what is the surface tension and course 5 is the capillarity and compressibility, what is capillarity, what is compressibility and why it is there and uh, uh, what are the advantages of these things. Course outcome 6 is the pipe flow and fluid friction and fluid pressure and where this will be applicable, why should we know all this? Uh, pipe flow fluid friction that is the CO6 <coughs> and properties of fluids is nothing but the characteristic of a system. So, the examples for the fluid properties are the pressure, temperature, volume, mass, and if you see the majorly the properties are divided into intensive and extensive. So, here intensive properties are those independent of the mass, and whereas extensive is the dependent on the mass. And the uh, extensive properties for unit mass that is called the specific properties. Here examples for the intensive properties are temperature, pressure, density. And intensive properties they dip, do not depend on the quantity of the fluid. For example, pressure that is nothing but the force per unit area exerted by the fluid. Temperature is another of thermal energy within the fluid. Density is mass per unit volume of the fluid. So here intensive properties do not depend on the amount of fluid present. Those are the viscosity. Viscosity is nothing but the fluid's resistance to flow or deformation. 
So fluidal exits from resistance to flow, which is called the viscosity. And specific gravity is nothing but the ratio of uh, density of any material to the density of reference material. So here a reference material or reference substance is nothing but the water. That means density of any material divided by density of water will give us the specific gravity. You can see here 13.6 is the specific gravity of mercury and uh, water specific gravity is 1 because 1000 by 1000. So fluid properties, extensive properties are uh, they depend on the quantity of fluids. So those are the volume, mass, total and total content. So more quantity, more volume, less quantity, less volume, more quantity, more mass, less quantity, less mass. Similarly, total energy and total heat content. So depending upon the quantity of fluids available. So intensity properties does not depend on the amount of matter. Extensive properties uh, depends on the amount of matter. So example for the intensive properties are melting point, boiling point, density, color and temperature. Whereas extensive properties depend on the quantity of matter. Those are the volume, energy, mass, size and weight. So these are the uh, intensive properties, boiling point, color, temperature, pressure and hardness. All these are intensive properties. That means irrespective of the quantity available, the hardness will not change, the shear will not change, temperature will not change, color will not change, boiling point will not change. Those are the intensive properties. Whereas extensive properties means the properties will change upon the quantity of fluid present available. So uh, the properties will be changed. So uh, based, in, uh, based on the quantity of available fluid, those are the volume, mass, size, weight, and weight. That means more volume, more quantity, more volume, less quantity, less volume. So more similarly, mass, kgs. So more fluid, more weight, more kgs, less fluid, less kgs, less mass. Similarly, size also. More fluid is there, size will be more. Less uh, fluid is there, less size. Similarly, weight. So weight is also a, if uh, quantity available is more, more weight will be there. If quantity available is less, weight will be less. The difference between the mass and weight is nothing but the, it is a kg and a newton. So if you multiply the acceleration due to gravity, then mass will become into weight. So here a length. So depending upon the quantity of available uh, fluid, so if less quantity, then less length, if more quantity and more length. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.